office and I thought I would do another live today, a little bonus live because Tuesday things did not go so well with our live. So I'm going to stay close to, uh, you know, close to the Wi-Fi and just kind of hang out for a little while and show you guys a little bit of what I got to do. I actually have to um, get these guys fed and we're going to clean some water on these sulcatas. They're hanging out in these custom cages, the vision cages by customcages.com a whole bunch of little baby sulcatas and i've got quite a lot of them in the top and bottom enclosure uh good morning bob what's up man so i've got quite a few of these little dudes and i thought hey let's do a little live hangout with some baby tortoises and we'll go ahead and i'm gonna clean up some water here little nasty waters they make poopies in it you know what i have to do hold on let's go get this let's do it right here we're hanging out. We're going to take care of some critters. And uh, it should be fun, man. I hope you guys are doing well today. Just throw that in there and then I'll give it a rinse. And then we'll get, we got to make sure I close these doors because I am, uh, oof, sometimes I forget. And we'll have little tortoises crawling around. You can see the white stuff in the water. That's actually uh, urates. And uh, Boudet, what's up, man? They take 90 days sulcata babies take about 90 days to hatch so three months so we're gonna go ahead and get this water out of here nice and gently there we go and then uh what we'll do is we'll rinse those out and i've got a jug of water that's been chilling here not chilling kind of room temperature uh but you can see these little babies are awesome i love baby sulcatas they're amazing little animals we got a lot of these little beans that i'm gonna pull out right now they don't eat the beans from the fluker food, but they do nibble on them and it's good for their beaks to get worn down. So I'm just doing a little bit of a spot clean, just pulling out some of this. I have more that I can replace it with, but you wanna just kind of pull out any old stuff as much as you can. We're not gonna do a full change here, my friends, but I am going to just do a little site clean. We're gonna start with sulcatas. We're gonna go on over to our, uh, we're gonna go on over to our other species, which is the redfoots and cherry heads that I have outside. So let's go ahead, spray this off. Let's go for a walk, everybody. Doop, 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 doop. We're going to walk out here. Uh, so how's everybody doing out there? I'll get to some questions here in a minute. I just figured, oh, well, I have the most finicky Wi-Fi. So crazy. Oscar, it's pretty hot. We also have a tortoise going out. Uh, shipping out to a new home. Someone purchased a tortoise from me. If you guys are interested in a tortoise, I have the sulcatas, which you need a lot of land for. You need to prepare for space. And I also have redfoots and cherry heads, which we'll see in just a little bit. So let's see. Who's from India? Let's see. Hi. Got people all over. Much better setup for baby sulcatas. Should I do an enclosure chamber, tortoise table? Uh, what's up, man, from the Philippines? Uh, tortoise tables are good. Uh, you just want to be careful with humidity with these little guys because uh, too much humidity can give them skin problems. So you don't want that. Uh, right now, what am I doing? I am a ball python, a bearded dragon. Go bearded dragon. Leatherback beardy, go bearded dragon. Uh, we're just putting some water in here. And these little guys can easily crawl into this. No big deal. Uh, so, okay, we got them watered. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to reach down here. And I'm going to grab... My Fluker tortoise treats, it's all backwards, but uh, it's the tortoise treats. And I love this stuff because basically what I do here, let me flip you guys, flip you. Uh, what I do is very simply, I'm going to put you guys up on a uh, little standy poo. And then we're going to move this down like this. So now we're on the gimbal. Uh, what I do simply, friends, is I just get this bag open like so. It's all dehydrated in there. And then we just add water. All right, that's what we're doing. Adding water. We're gonna let that sit. We're gonna let that sit for a second. I'm gonna come back up here. I'll answer some questions as we look at some of the babies. Um, these guys are awesome. Uh, so it's really cool. And uh, it's rad, man. So we're just letting that soak. Uh, but again, like, look at this guy. He's got an interesting scoot pattern. Uh, any tips on baby leopards? Yeah, baby leopards, you want to have a humid hide. They're very much similar to sulcatas as babies. 
You want them to have a humid hide. You want to keep them with a high fiber diet. Look at all these guys waking up. They know I'm going to feed them. Uh, so yeah, nice high fiber diet. Uh, you want the basking area to be uh, between, you know, 105, 115 degrees, believe it or not. You want it nice and warm. They will lay in. They're going to move in and out of that. Then of course, you got a water bowl. You're going to have a hiding area with some sphagnum moss in it, stuff like that. Uh, so it's cool. Uh, no baby snake necks for sale. Uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of baby sulcatas. So you can email me at kenanh1 at comcast.net. Uh, these little guys are, uh, you know, oh, we'll do a special. We're, we'll, we'll, these guys are now $60 uh, plus the shipping. You can email me um, at kenanh1 at comcast.net. But what we're talking about is how to care for these little dudes. They're so cute. Pretty amazing. I love it. Uh, what, what's, at what age? Let's see. This is from Kusina in Baiwa. Baiwa. Hey, Kenan, what, at what age, I guess, is what you meant? Become sexually mature. Good question. Uh, Sulcanas grow fairly quickly, but they don't become sexually mature until at least 10 years old. Uh, and they've got to be close to 50 uh, pounds as a female. Uh, and, and I'd say just about the same for a male. Uh, so pretty important to make sure that they're grown up nice because you want the females to be large enough they can easily pass eggs. Um, you don't want them to get egg bound if they're too young. You try and breed something too young. But tortoises generally uh, know what they're doing with reproduction. They kind of have to be a certain size first. Look at this little dude. How funny. Very, very cool. So we've got the top we got the bottom. We've got quite a few uh, little baby sulcatas, and I'm not going to be doing any reptile shows, so I'm offering the special uh, for these little guys. So if you uh, are interested, email me, kenanh1 at uh, comcast.net. Okay, this should be properly soaked. Let's go over here. And if the, we get a little water out, no big deal. I like it to be hydrated. That's all right. That's okay. One little hydration on this. There we go. Just they'll drink some of that water. Let's go at the bottom and then I'll peek back in and oh, you'll see. The smell is delicious if you're a baby tortoise. Uh, these guys are awesome. Oh, good luck, Mike G. Got to have a backyard up. Oh, see, there he goes getting some of that nice wet stuff. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. They, they grow just like GP Guerra, Guerra. yeah, the, uh, the extra scoots have absolutely no ill effect on the baby tortoises. Uh, it's just simply an incubation temperature. Uh, it's just how they kind of came out, but they're healthy. They just are a little different. Some people like that. Some people like that stuff. See you later, Leatherback Beardy, you're the best. Um, thanks for joining me on this live today. But uh, yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun, they're cool. You can see all these guys are doing well because they're eating. And that is really important. When you have little babies that are active and eating, uh, all this food will be gone very shortly. Let's go ahead, do this. Do some more food on the little trays. Oh boy, here we go. There we go, that looks good, right? And believe it or not, they'll get right through that. Uh, is there a reptile that I haven't kept, but I would like to on a bite? Oh, man. That's a good question. Can I think about that? Uh, a crocodile of some kind. I'd love to have uh, maybe a dwarf croc. Uh, I'd love to have five acres on my property so that I could uh, legally uh, keep, um, you know, uh, legally keep crocodiles. It'd be fun to have a big crocodile here. I don't know, I'm just a little nutty. I kind of like that. Uh, Komodo dragon would be awesome. I'd have to get a proper zoo though. Let's go outside. We're gonna come on out here because we got a little bit more food. I wanna spread the wealth and I wanna give the babies over here. There you go. We, oh look, they're all up and at them looking for, looking for food. So I'll show you what we got down here. Blow out some of the chips. These guys were just eating uh, yesterday. I fed them some cactus and I fed them some, oh, what is it? Mulberry leaves, so very cool. So that's good, that is done. Uh, let's go ahead and see, oh, here's a cherry head. It's a pretty cherry head right here. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful little cherry head. Uh, my Mata Mata went to my buddy's house, went to Fred's house, and now it lives with my friend, Mike Lorette. So here's a cherry head. Okay, these guys are kept outside. So they have a little bit 
of a dry, um, it's, it's just a little superficial fungus. It happens when you keep tortoises outside. I can just easily put a little Lotrimin on that and it goes away. But I like to keep these guys outside because they do well out here. Here's a red foot. See this guy? They're different because you don't have the as same darkness as the um, cherry heads on the bottom. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, well, you know, it's funny. You ask if you should get one tortoise or two tortoises. Um, I always like to get two because I like to, you, you know, you're going to want more than one. Um, and what will happen is when you buy one and then a few years later get another tortoise, what will happen is one grows faster than the other. So it's always good to kind of start the race at the same time, so to speak. Look how tiny these are. These guys just hatched out earlier this week. Look at how small they are. The others have been around for about a month and a half, so they grow fairly quickly. Look at this. They're going to eat their food. How awesome. Um, so, you know, in that regard, I would get two. The other thing that we just, I just read an article that was going around social media. Uh, reptiles actually do enjoy, oh, hold on. Reptiles, I hit the wrong button. Reptiles do actually enjoy each other's company and they get less stressed if they have a buddy around. So it seems like common sense for us. I mean, human beings enjoy the company of other people sometimes. Uh, and the same thing happens with reptiles. They took two rattlesnakes, put them in a dark container. If the snake was alone and the container was hit, uh, the rattlesnake would, you know, they, they tracked its heart rate, they tracked its temperament. Um, and they, they saw that its vital signs got up, they got nervous, but if you had two of them together, it calmed them down. They did not reach the same level of um, anxiety, I guess they're trying to read, as the, uh, as the lone snake. So that's kind of interesting. So I always like to kind of um, have two, uh, two or more of the animals, if you can do it. Um, that's not to say you can't get one, uh, it just works out better. Uh, and I think you have a more well-rounded creature if you, in fact, have two because they get to see and interact with each other. So that's neat. So check this out. I'm going to go over here to the pond. And what I like to do is I've got this little cup. And the cup has a little pinhole in it. So we know this water is good. There's no chemicals in it. And the turtles are swimming around in it. It's nice and filtered. But look, it's now dripping into the water container here. Uh, hi, Zane, Howard. Uh, it's now getting itself some hydrogen. Yeah, four. Very cool. They are a joy. They're fantastic. Um, you just got to know what you're doing. And there's plenty of information on our channel here uh, to teach you guys about how to keep the sulcatus. What's up, Justin T? Rich buddy, what's up? What do you got? My box turtle is happily with my green tree python. Hey, man, that's cool. You know, I've actually put tortoises in with lone croc monitor when I had um, Lagatha. Um, uh, she was really kind of agitated all the time. But when I put some elongated tortoises in with her, she actually calmed down. I guess she enjoys the, watching them like I do. It's pretty interesting. So we really don't know, man. It's not something I, I don't discount the lives of reptiles because they um, actually have, you know, some really... Um, cognitive, they have some cognitive abilities. Um, and I think there's more to them than people think. What's up, Simon from Scotland? How you going? Uh, so you can see these guys are doing well. Uh, what's up, D DeVore from the Philippines? Happy birthday. It's your 54th birthday. Good job, Jason. Nice to uh, meet you on here, buddy. Uh, very cool. Uh, can you keep your year old sulcata tortoise in an outside enclosure, even though there's no direct sunlight? Uh, I, uh, you know, as long as it gets partial sunlight during the day, yeah, that would be fine. Um, that would be important, you know. Uh, tortoise with an Argus. Now, when you're talking about keeping um, uh, Argus monitors, that's an interesting question. As long as the Argus isn't large enough to flip the tortoise over, um, it's an adult tortoise, um, they may not do anything. But I know Slinky will try and eat um, smaller tortoises. So very important to make sure the sizes are right, and I'd watch for any kind of aggression. Um, truth be told, I did have uh, um, a hingeback tortoise in with Slinky once, and the hingeback was large, but what happened was Slinky flipped him over, and he couldn't right himself, and he wound up dying because he got overheated, which was a shame. So I don't 
keep any tortoises in with slinkers. Um, here's some more cherry heads. There's a cherry head and a red foot right there. Uh, very cool. And then over here, you can see this water's filling up and the agitation of the dripping will attract the tortoises. Uh, the red foots I'm doing for $100 plus shipping. Shipping is $75 all over the United States. If you live in Florida, shipping is only $40. Or you can arrange a pickup at a local supermarket and uh, you will, can save on the shipping if you live in Florida and want to pick the tortoise up. Um, but, you know... I, I always like, you know, getting my animals um, either from uh, directly from the breeder or a lot of the animals that I get are from zoos um, that need homes. So it's pretty cool. Thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate that. You're very kind. Um, just having fun. We're having fun with these animals. We're trying to educate. Uh, I want to keep the passion alive. I think it's a good thing to have these animals. Um, as you guys know, I advocate for uh, responsible ownership of these animals and I try and do everything um, right in perfect view of you guys so you can kind of see uh, what I go through and I show you my mistakes um, it happens uh, so there you go Jules I'll love to get a Gario that'd be great I don't know where to get one though and it'd be very difficult to get uh, but Gario's are amazing I got to feed some at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm so for now I'll just keep going to St. Augustine Alligator Farm and hanging out with their Gario's uh, with the crew over there my home away from home I love those folks and I love the animals there uh, yeah I love Scotty Cramner I haven't talked to him in a little while but he's a good buddy and I love him and uh, I hope to ride with him again soon and you can see look at these guys eating uh, again just showing you that one of these tortoises, if you guys purchase, um, these, this, these are some of the tortoises that you would be getting. Uh, let's see, no one under there. Let's see what's over here. Oh, here's a couple tortoises. Here's a nice cherry head. Here's a red foot. Here's another red foot. I want to wake them all up and show them off. There's a red, there's a cherry head. There is a small cherry head. Cherry heads are a little bit more expensive. They're a little bit more sought after. They're 250 plus the shipping. Um, but they're really awesome. I love these tortoises. I love my redfoots. They're fun. Hey, look at that. So we've got quite a few redfoots here. If anyone's interested and you have a nice home that it's looking to go to, there you go. Look at all these redfoots, man. Cherry heads, redfoots, everyone's eating. They are active in the morning. Right now it's starting to get hot. So what they do is they get active in the morning uh, and then they do that. Um, I do PayPal, Julius. So PayPal is the best way to do it. Um, that's the way I prefer to do it. And uh, when you do it, what I ask is that you, in the PayPal notes, you make sure that you write the species you want, your address, uh, your phone number. Uh, all that information I, I can send to you guys uh, in an email when you inquire at my email, kenanh one at comcast.com. Net. So that's K-E-N-A-N-H, the number one, at Comcast.net. Um, but yeah, um, very good stuff. Look at all these guys. Beautiful, beautiful little critters. And they're making noises. Uh, very active, very happy. Uh, yeah, I would say every two months you can change that uh, substrate. Or if you notice an odor, uh, that would be crazy. Amanda, great question. How big do these tortoises get? Well, guess what? I can show you. In fact, I'm barefoot, so I'm going to be brave here. Let's go. Well, this guy's not eating, so I'm not disturbing him. Let's go look at some adults, shall we? What's up, Chris from England? How you doing? Jolly old England. Good to have people from across the pond visit us. So again, guys, it's a little warm. So where, where is everybody? Everybody's going to be hiding. There's a tortoise. Here's a uh, red foot right there. That's a adult red foot, okay? So let me show you the size difference. There you go, baby adult. These guys I consider very uh, good captives because they don't get massive. Here's an adult female, a little bit smaller, but she's still an adult. Hello, young lady. Are you a female? Yes, you are a female. And look, there's possibly her baby. Isn't that cute? So this is, let's see how the interaction would be if she saw her baby, I don't know. They really don't care. Do you see this? Are you gonna bite its head? Don't bite the little guy. Look at you. This is what you look like when you were little. What's up, Edward from Tempe? I gotta get out to Arizona. I might go out there next year and do a bicycle race and then I can film with all my tortoise friends that are living out there. Uh, 
Well, you know, J.P. Guerra, uh, Guerrera, um, cherry heads and redfoots are actually the same species, so they can breed together without any issue. Um, they're actually the same species. What we're talking about is a locality. Uh, the cherry heads are generally from Brazil, an area from Brazil, and they are, um, in fact, um, what they are is just a subspecies um, of the redfoot. So they just keep the redhead as opposed to, see the yellow head here? Um, they're keeping that redhead throughout their life and they stay generally smaller. And in fact, we can easily walk over and see some cherry heads. Let's go see a cherry head. I'll go grab a, oh, look at this big male. That's a pretty large male. So again, here's a size difference. That's a male, okay? And you see the wasping on the male? Wasping is the narrowing of the waist. The females don't have that. But of course, the males do. And they have the concave plaster on. Now, cherry head males are going to be smaller than females, and they're not going to have that narrowing of the waist. Let's walk back over here. We're going to put our little redfoot buddy back. We're going to grab a cherry head, and we're going to walk over to the adults that produced him. Here's a cherry head right there. He's a nice little guy. Hi, little buddy. Come on with me. Let's go. I, I think the Wi-Fi will continue to work. Here's the old Camp Cannon vehicle looking good. My friends at CBI and Prince Sue Designs Studio hooked me up and I've got a little rag in there, I was cleaning. I actually, it was actually infested with ants. So I had to do a little maintenance and get rid of the ants. Uh, speaking of males, here's a male, cherry head tortoise right here. Look at that. So male cherry head tortoise, here's a, a, a young one. Look at this, when daddy met baby, crazy. You can, you're not gonna bite it, are you? Sometimes they will do that. Look, he's scared of his own little buddy. How funny, huh? And every once in a while, friends, I will find you. See, this is why we don't put large tortoises in with small tortoises. They get a little fixated on them and it's possible that they might nibble on them. Because believe it or not, even though they are mostly herbivores, if they find an easy meal, they'll take it, especially redfoot tortoises, because redfoot tortoises uh, will sometimes consume slugs and earthworms and things like that. But how pretty um, are they? And look at this, that's the size. If you have a male, that's about as big as a male's getting. That's incredible. So they are dwarf species and uh, really, really cool. Here comes a female right behind me, coming over to see what's going on. I, I think they're very friendly animals. Um, you know, the sulcatas, the, the redfoots, and the cherry heads are all extremely inquisitive, interactive animals. That's why I love them. See, as soon as I come over here, they hear my voice, okay? And they start to come out. Here's another male. This is another one of the boys, okay? These guys are, some of them are really old, so their shells are a little uh, muted, okay? This is an especially old tortoise, so... Uh, that coloration after 50, 60 years goes away. They're also a little dirty. We need a little rain to clean these guys up. Hey, look, there's another one over there. So, uh, very cool. All right, Kerry, uh, the Irish. Yeah, they, you can email me at kenanh1 at comcast.net. I'll send you the price list. But um, Redfoot's I'm doing for 100 plus the shipping. Uh, the cherry heads are a bit expensive. They're 250 but... They really keep that color, they stay small, and what you spend now, you save because you don't wind up with a giant tortoise. Uh, a lot of times you can get a sulcata, um, uh, they're $60 for me, um, and the next thing you know, you're gonna be spending thousands and thousands of dollars because you have a large tortoise uh, in about 10 years that you're gonna need fencing and overwintering and things like that. So I always try and steer people to our cherry heads and our red foots because they make better captives and they do well. What's up, Dragonheart in the UK? What's going on? Uh, so we still have this little dude. I only ship in the continental United States. I can't ship overseas to Hawaii or to Puerto Rico. Can't do it. These guys are really chasing me. It is a feeding day, um, but I'll be feeding later on. Um, what would I recommend as a setup on a baby sulcata? Should I go with uh, an enclosed chamber? No, I think we already discussed this. Um, I, I think a tortoise table is the way to go, especially if you're living in the Philippines. Uh, humidity is not going to be a problem for you. Uh, so that's something that's interesting. Only in the continental United States, people. I only ship in the continental United States. I do not export uh, any of my animals overseas. Um, I just 
don't have the permits and uh it's just easier for me guys uh so we're walking back we're coming back here and uh we're gonna be wrapping up this live i hope we've learned a few things about baby tortoises um, answer some of your questions uh let's see let's see no no the males have the narrowing of the waist max maxi max uh the male redfoot tortoises will get a narrowing of the waist. Do you want me to show you again? I'll show you again. It's no big deal. Let's walk out. Maybe some of you guys have missed this. Okay, in cherry head tortoises, which remember are a red foot tortoise, basically the same thing. The differences between cherry heads and regular red foots. Cherry heads do not get the narrowing of the waist if they are a male, okay? Male red foots will get a narrowing of the waist. I'm trying to find one for you. Here's Lego. There's Lego! What's up? Um, so they will get that narrowing of the waist, and I'm going to show you an example of that. We have some flowers. I can actually entice the critters to come out. Let me go grab some of these hibiscus flowers. This is another cool thing. You can, depending on the time of year or where you live, you can actually grow these flowers, okay? Pluck them, and I chuck them right out for the critters to eat. Let's see. I'm going to flip you guys. So as I was saying, the differences uh, between these guys, let's get them out. We will see a narrow-waisted redfoot, I promise. I will not let you down. I think we have one right here. Look at this. Come on, guy. Here comes a male from underneath, and then we'll give a flower to our girl. There we go. But here's the male. Now watch this. Check this out. I'm going to go up above. And I'm going to show you, see how the waist narrows in here, okay? That's, we call that wasping or, you know, hourglassing, whatever. It's just got a natural uh, kind of narrowing of the waist right there. And that shows you it's a male. It also, they also have the concave plaster on. Look, the females don't have that, okay? And the, um, here's another female. And the cherry heads don't have that. And another interesting thing about female cherry heads is sometimes they can take on characteristics that look more male. Darth Maul has a slightly con concave plaster on and a longer tail, which generally means it's a male. But one day I thought it was a male and the next thing you know, she's laying eggs, so it's good. Matt's doing well, he was here. Uh, he's feeling better. He was uh, with me yesterday. Um, but you know, he's still, he, he does have some back pain that, uh, we got to get fixed for him. But again, look at this pile up. Such a cool pile up friends. Awesome. Huh? So yeah, really cool that you guys could join me on this live. Like I said, I wasn't happy with how Tuesdays went down. Uh, so it bugged me and I wanted to, uh, do a makeup for you guys. Um, here is the Camp Cannon rec pond. We're filling up the water. There hasn't been uh, rain in a few days because of the heat. Uh, it evaporates uh, at a higher rate. And so I wanna make sure my pumps have adequate water to uh, circulate through them so they don't burn out. Let's go over here real quick. I'm walking, I have such gentle little, I'm, I'm a tenderfoot and I'm walking on these rocks and it is painful. Um, okay, we're coming over here. I was just, yeah, I knew they would be, they hear me. Okay, they hear me. Here is good old Snaggletooth. I don't know, can you guys see? Snaggletooth, oh, he just went under. Now, let me see if I can get Dale to come up. Dale! Dale! Come on, Dale! Come on, Dale! Where are you, Dale? Dale is usually not shy, whereas Snaggletooth is. It's kind of crazy. Dale, come on, girl. I don't know, guys. She's in there somewhere. Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Look, to, look. come here, Dale. Good girl. Come here, Dale. You guys see her? Look at her coming. Is this the coolest? Come on, girl. Good girl. Come on up. That's my baby. That's my girlfriend, Dale. I love her. So awesome that you can call an alligator like a dog. They're so smart. And it's so fun that I have these dinosaurs in Fred's Lagoon here. Um, I just can't believe it. They're amazing. So very cool stuff, man. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, Dale was vulgar. Hey, look, it's Matt. Matt's on the chat. 
we were just talking about Matt. Matt's where it's at. So uh, yeah, Dale was singing yesterday. She was actually grunting. Matt and I filmed some videos. Someone was asking about our snakes. We got a video with the snakes coming out. Um, we did some fun videos with some of the wild animals around the camp, um, which are actually becoming tame. Uh, and uh, what else did we do? My gosh, we did some fun things with some of the, uh, we did a tortoise, uh, uh, what is it? Like a scavenger hunt for tortoises. It'll be cool, man. So uh, we also have the large, we did a little bit with these guys in one of the videos, the black throat monitors. They're just kind of hanging out. Uh, so there's, look at this guy. Matt got, a, if you guys go to my Instagram, Camp Ken in Instagram, you'll see a really cool video of one of the black throats coming out of the cave. It looked really cool. So Matt threw that up and it was a lot of fun. So yeah, we're just, like I said, I'm just uh, really trying to make up for a crappy, a crappy live on, on what was it, Monday. Um, so thanks for joining me today. Uh, what's up, who's, wait, I, I love when I get friends from Australia. What's up, Michael Thornley? Good day to you, mate. It's uh, always a pleasure to have my friends from down under pop in since we are at complete opposites of the globe. So it's nice that you're, I don't know what time it is there, but it can't be a good time to be watching YouTube videos. Uh, anyhow, all the tortoises are good. I'm gonna kind of walk inside right now as we shut down this video. Uh, it's getting hot out here. Um, and I've got some things to do today, but again, I just wanna remind you, if you are interested, uh, in baby sulcata or redfoot or cherry head, email me at kennanh1 at comcast.net. I just showed you that these little dudes, oh, by the way, here they are. They are definitely eating. They are definitely happy. So there you go, my friends. Uh, we're doing a really cool sale on the sulcatas, $60 uh, for the sulcatas, plus shipping. Shipping is 75, but you know, if you buy more than one tortoise, you're getting a heck of a deal, you'll save on shipping. So I can send up to five tortoises for the same price of, um, you know, $65. So that's it. Oh, it's 12, 12 a.m. in Australia, Katrina. Oh my God, go to bed, lady. What are you doing? I actually was up late uh, last night myself, but I sprung into action. Oh. I wanna show you something else before we go. Hold on. Uh, uh, there's an Australian. We love Steve Irwin. Um, RIP Steve, we love you. Uh, but check this out. Check it out. I know some of you know what this is. I showed it the other day. We've got Cayman eggs and I don't know. I don't know, they're looking pretty good to me. This would be my first time hatching crocodilians of any species. Look at this, they look like they're chalking, my friends. They look like they're chalking. Holy smokes. Can you imagine having little baby smooth front caimans here at the camp? Holy Toledo. It is gonna be, whoa, owie. Uh, Cayman Creek is gonna be going off, baby. Uh, going off, uh, to say in my New York accent. The only alligators I ever encountered when I lived in New York were in the sewers. I'd have to go in the sewers and I find a lot of alligators in the sewers. I was like the croc hunter from New York. Instead of having an Australian accent, I had a New York accent and I go down there and we find a big alligators. I'm just kidding. Uh, what's up, Jill from Western Australia? How you doing? All right, guys, listen, really appreciate each and every one of you jumping on here. Um, you guys rule. Thanks for watching the channel. Uh, we're the little channel that could. We've been at it for 10 years, Tom and myself. We've welcomed Matt to our crazy dysfunctional fun family uh, last fall, and it's been going great. I uh, couldn't be more happy with our progress. Um, I'm really, really pleased and honored that you guys pay attention to whatever we're doing. So thank you guys. Uh, you guys be good. Later, monkey man. We're all monkey men, aren't we? if we're being serious about it. Uh, that's it for us. Thank you so much. I'll see you all again soon. I'll be popping on doing more lives on YouTube. So thank you so much for uh, your attention and your uh, friendship, I suppose, for watching these crazy videos. See you all again soon. Bye.